my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this. This is the Jaguar F Type. This is to unlock the car. This is to lock the car. This is to turn on the light. This is to open the boot, and this is to turn on the hazards. The key is the same, which you have seen on on a lot of Jaguar cars. I've kept both the doors open because obviously it gets frameless doors, which look really very cool. So the front end has been updated, and it is no longer like the Swift, but frameless doors look super duper cool. Just look at it. That really gives this car the sports car fun factor in terms of visuals. I don't even know what I said, but anyways, let's just shut this. There it shuts because you're going to be opening the engine bay straight away, which opens from here. Okay, that is the engine. It is a five-liter supercharged V8 motor, and you know what? There is no space for a battery. There is no space for a washer fluid either. It doesn't get insulation here, but these vents are actually functional. Obviously, you get hydraulic struts, of course, but it has got airbag. Yes, that's right. It has got pedestrian airbag, which you know, in case of a collision with a pedestrian. Blows and pops open the hood so that the pedestrian can fall with comfort and doesn't really feel the impact as much because this obviously absorbs part of it. Now it says Jaguar here on the engine. The engine feels or sounds a bit loud right now. Okay, this is where the nozzle is for the washer fluid. So that is given on the wipers, dual blade wipers, fantastic quality, but it does not go further than this. Our Indian car washers are going to be so disappointed. Now you got a camera here or multiple one of those because obviously it's got some ADAS functions like lane keep assist. Okay, let me show you how the car looks with the hood open. I really like the way the hood opens on this car. It's absolutely fantastic. So let's quickly shut this and just see. All I have to do is push it, and uh, effort is needed. And there it shuts. So this is very much functional. It says Sajda as the vehicle chassis number. Yeah, that is placed right here. Says Jaguar here. It talks about some lamination on the glass as well. Now the front design is very very nice. This is the R dynamic. That's the reason it says R dynamic right here. It has got front parking sensors, beautiful Jaguar logo, and it has got piano black finishing on most of the areas. You get a front splitter as well, and it says F type right here too. Now these are the lights. These are pixel LED headlights. Beautiful in terms of the illumination at night. This is the DRS. There's a headlight washer here. And this is actually functional. This air vent is very much functional. So Faisal Khan's fingers of truth really happy with that. Okay, ground clearance is obviously on the lower side. The DRL converts into a dynamic swipe indicator, which you can see functioning at the moment. And the front tire size happens to be a 255, 35, 20. Alloy wheel design is nice. In fact, it says Jaguar here on the brake calipers as well. Huge disc, but staggered tire setup. This is probably functional. Yeah, it seems functional to me. There's a Jaguar logo there as well. It doesn't project anything from the outside rear view mirrors at night, but there is an indicator on the outside rear view mirrors. Now coming to the side of the car, it looks absolutely beautiful. Okay, you know what? It is a two-seater sports car, yet the wheelbase is longer than both the Creta as well as the City, which just shows you how long a car this is. Anyways, coming to the rear wheels, these are bigger in terms of size. 295, 30, 20s. Yeah, staggered tire setup for the win. In fact, attention detail is crazy. You get this side skirt there as well. Now, this thing actually pops in and out. Yep, it pops in and out. It says Jaguar here. Jaguar calls it the mechanical handshake. It's done for better aerodynamic efficiency. This Jaguar logo here actually illuminates at night. It says Jaguar there on the mat as well. And then you got some vehicle information here. Door pockets are small. All the controls here are the same as the on the driver's side. So there's no bhed bhav right there. Says airbag here. In fact, it says airbags in many places because it says airbag here as well. It says airbag there too. Yeah, so multiple places for it to say airbag. It says Jaguar here on the seat. There's the logo, Jag logo. Now to open the glove box, very simple. Just press this button. There opens the glove box. It's decent size, but doesn't get the cooling function. By the way, to open the hood, it has to be opened from the co-passenger side, not from the driver side. I don't even understand why that is, considering that. We are in a right-hand drive market, and Jaguar is a company from the UK, which is a right-hand drive market. So that's kind of a bummer. 
everything is the same on this door except the fact that you can only control your side of the power window the driver can control both and then when i shut this yeah you can see once again i'll show you there then it goes up okay it comes out because it knows i have the key of the vehicle you get a shark fin antenna right there there's a fixed spoiler so i'm just going to show you how beautiful it looks from the rear before that let's just shut the door firstly this frameless door is so nice and fantastic i love frameless doors they're kind of cool okay here there shuts the window okay if i press both the buttons together yeah the outside rear view mirror is shut so that's how they are operated and that's about it 12 way electric adjust for the driver seat unlock the car lock the car memory seats you can say up to three people settings both for the driver as well as the co driver and you press this button there it's going to go back into its position there you see the steering wheel is also moving because obviously it's got electric adjust here there's a subzi holding thingy and there's the speaker as well and there's a vent as there i don't even know why that is the case anyways let's just shut this and let me show you the car from the rear because it looks absolutely mind blowing and purposeful look at that so what they have done is they have actually revised the tail lights and it says p450 all wheel drive 450 stands for the horsepower of the vehicle lights look really nice and beautiful those are actually the fog lights on both the sides facet cans fingers of truth will stay away from these real exhaust yeah there are quad exhaust in this car that you can see quad freaking exhaust and again fog light on the other side you got parking sensors all through at the rear and you've got a towing hook as well and there is where the camera is i'm just going to clean it myself and you know what it says jaguar here but there is a light for the number plate of course and then in order to open the boot i just press this button there it opens because it is a power tailgate here now the boot is not really big in terms of size but it is so that you can carry a golf bag that is how it was designed i've actually kept a bottle there because there's no space on the inside the battery is placed right here yeah there is where the battery of the vehicle goes yeah because there's no space and there's this i think tool kit or something of that sort no this is a tire uh, inflator because it doesn't get a spare wheel actually they put the spare wheel right on top here that's how it is done but it's uh, not really i mean easy to use and there's a handle so they can pull it shut but this power function so we will just press this button and there shuts the boot okay but before that let me show you where the washer fluid goes you will be surprised that it actually goes right here imagine the length of the pipe to get the water from here all the way to the front wipers because obviously this car does not get a rear wiper it doesn't need it probably because of the way the design has been done earlier f types actually had a spoiler which used to retract at speed and then used to go back down in fact there is a high mounted stop lamp here on the top you get a shark fin antenna this is where fuel goes i fueled up yesterday it is bloody expensive here in the uk i filled 97 octane for rupees 210 per liter because of the war fuel prices have gone really high it can take ethanol 5 and 10% blend as well minimum 95 octane is what it requires i still put 97 i'm so generous anyways let me shut this let me show you the wheels from down because they are massive look at the size of the tires isn't that huge coming to the side of the vehicle this is the most purposeful look of the car from the side it looks fast even while standing still let's get inside there are a few interesting bits to talk about before that hello jaguar mechanical handshake with me why not you can see the dashboard design looks fantastic it's a asymmetrical dashboard but it is very similar to the one as before so not much has really changed on the dashboard front only thing is they have updated few amount of tech now this is a single piece seat and it's fantastic it's very comfortable it says airbag here so jaguar has loaded all the airbags in the world right here this seat has to be manually retracted when you are wearing the seat belt so you have to turn and do some amount of acrobatics in fact there is some storage space here as well and there is storage space behind too but yeah that's about it thankfully it gets a moonroof earlier models did not get it this does not open it has a sun blind which has to be manually operated and there are buttons here i think this one is for the headlight leveling this is for the rear fog light this is to open the boot and this is for lane keep assist it's got imen lighting which illuminates jaguar here it illuminates some blue light here it also illuminates here in the center console of the vehicle and you can see the steering wheel feels nice to hold has got lot of buttons now this is for the cruise control function yeah this is for heating the steering wheel of the vehicle let's turn off the indicators these are the controls for the audio system as well as for voice commands let's actually turn off the lights because when i do that you can see the intensity of the cluster's light actually improves it gets a auto dimming inside rear view mirror these are buttons for the connected car thing sos and all that the sun visor is very cute and small it does not come out it's fixed so if you get it on both the sides the sun visor and the mirror is so chintu now you really can't see much as such okay now the thing is that to retract this has to be done manually but earlier models did not even get that so i'm happy for the moonroof because it helps me shoot better with the camera let's shut this okay the door is longer than you would anticipate 
Now the thing is that it's got leather here, so it's very premium in terms of the interior bits and there are no hard plastics, so soft touch materials almost everywhere. This bucket seat is very comfortable and there's this lever right there for the adjustment of the steering wheel, both for reach as well as rake. This is obviously the Jaguar logo, it says airbag here, has this leather finishing, so it feels very nice to hold. In fact, these are the controls for the headlights, it gets automatic headlights. These are the controls for the wipers, it also gets automatic wipers. Let's use the wipers right away, and there you can see, plenty of spray on offer, cleans the windscreen in no time at all. The wipers are fantabulous, I really love the way the quality of the wipers have been done on this car. Okay, this is a 12.3 inch instrument cluster, which is similar to what you've seen on other Jaguar Land Rover cars. In order to go to the menu, I have to press the menu OK button and there you can see there are plenty of settings which I can go. I can go into the layout and okay, I think I've turned on the audio system. So let me just turn it off by mistake. I actually turned it on. So here I can decide how I want the layout to be. Yeah, it's not the most intuitive to use. I can get into one dial mode and this is actually the one dial mode and then we just get out of this. So that's kind of nice with the F-Type parked right there. That is the navigation and the usual bits. Everything is in miles per hour here in the UK. You get paddle shifters, of course, which feel nice to, I mean, use, obviously. And you know what? This is an updated screen. This is 10 inch in size. Earlier, the screen size was actually 8 inch with physical controls on both the sides, but that has been removed. And now Jaguar is becoming very proud of its past. The older Jaguars were not known to be reliable, but newer models are definitely much better in that regard. That's why it says established 1935 Jaguar Coventry. That's kind of nice. And then overall quality, fit, finish and everything is nice. This is a grab handle for the co-passenger to hold on to because when you accelerate this car, it will fly. It says Meridian here because it obviously gets a Meridian sound system. Uh, quality of the sound is actually good. So we just listen to it. Yeah, but honestly, you really do not care about the sound quality because what you care about is the performance. And for that, we have got this switch, which is the dry mode selector. So there's a snow ice mode. This is the normal mode. And there is a racing mode, checkered flag mode, which is actually the sport mode. So here you can see the cluster right now. Okay, I'm just going to get into the other mode, ice snow mode. There you can see the cluster changes and the F-Type is in that condition right now. And then this is the normal mode. And this is actually the dynamic mode and things become red in that. Okay, now these are the controls for the air conditioning. It is done fantastically well because here I can increase or decrease the blower speed. So I just push it inside to turn on and off the air conditioning. And I've turned it off. So you'll see the AC vents actually go inside. Yes, the center AC vents are actually hidden and they come out when you turn on the air conditioning. And it says Jaguar here as well. So the level of attention to detail is next level. Oh my goodness, how did they even manage that? Come on camera, focus on it. Okay, and then you can obviously turn on and off the vents. But why do you want to do that? You just turn off the air conditioning and there it goes back inside. Okay, older Jaguar, especially the XF had something similar. Only thing is, it had this rotating vents on all the vents, even the side vents. Here the side vents don't change at all. Okay, here is a 12 volt charging socket. And this is for the volume controller and to turn on and off the screen as well. Some piano black finishing, which is obviously a fingerprint magnet. Meanwhile, this is for the traction control button. This is for the active exhaust and this is for the stop start system. This is the electric parking brake and the gear lever feels really very nice to hold. This is the engine start button, which actually pulsates in red when you get inside the car at night. That's a very cool thing. Here you've got twin cup holders with this beautiful finishing below. Kind of nice. And here you've got more charging bits. So there's a micro SIM slot. There's a 12 volt charging socket and two USB charging sockets. So it does not get USB-C yet, which is disappointing. This does not slide ahead or behind. Now, the thing is, let me turn on the air conditioning because in order to use the ventilation or the heating function, all I have to do is press it like this. Turn it right, heating turns on. Turn it left, ventilation turns on. This is so freaking cool. I know Maruti Suzuki has copied something similar with the Swift. Even the front design was similar, but whatever. Anyways, this is not the most intuitive thing to use. It has got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity, but no wireless function. It has something known as dynamic eye. Yeah, it lets you do the setup of the vehicle in terms of engine steering, gear shift and suspension and all that. So that's also cool. And then it has got a stopwatch. It has got a G-Force meter. So it has got plenty of tech as well. It also shows you how much power and torque uh, I mean, rather, how much throttle and brake you are applying gives you a graph and all that. So, uh, like nice telemetry, of course, but it's not the most intuitive system to use. So, we are just going to get into the navigation, which is cool enough, I would say. Let's get out of this. And, uh, yeah, there's not much to see here, other than the fact that I can get into cameras. So, this is the reverse parking camera. We'll get out of this. It has got 360 parking sensors as well. So, this is the reverse parking camera and it has got adaptive guidelines. 
it's a very nice and easy to use camera because visibility and quality of the camera is good the only thing is this whole screen is not the most intuitive to use could have been better there's the clock there's this helmet thingy okay for what we were seeing right now uh, so usual functions which you see in most of the cars but i expected slight better let's just turn off the air conditioning there are buttons here for the air conditioning as well so yeah physical controls that makes it so much easier to operate almost anything inside this car now where is the light it's a touch sensitive light if i press it like this there the light activates that's kind of cool and not so easy to understand on first go anyways most of you really care how is the driving of this car so let me do one thing let me turn it off first thing because when i turn off the car now here okay let me open the door there it shows the jaguar logo and then it disappears in a very nice and soothing fashion which definitely looks cool yeah there it's gone okay when i turn on the car there yeah it shows me which door is open and again the graphics are kind of nice and let me turn off the car again because there it fades out beautifully let's start driving right away All right, we're all set to go, which means turning on the car. Absolutely rose to life like an absolute beast. Here we are going to get into this uh, telemetry data. It says available only in dynamic mode because we are going to get into dynamic mode. Just three drive modes and instantly you can hear the active exhaust. Stop start system off, handbrake down. We get into gear. I get into sport for the gearbox as well. Dynamic increases engine response. So everything should be in dynamic, which I've made right now. Though technically it should be in that only when I'm in dynamic mode. We are going to turn on the G-Force meter. No, how much throttle and brake is being applied? You can see that air conditioning is off, obviously, because when I turn on the air conditioning, you can see this thing pops out. So we're going to turn off the air conditioning. Traction control will keep on for the moment. Air conditioning off, left foot on the brake, and slowly we will crawl ahead because this road surface is not the best to launch the vehicle. Okay, let me use the wipers as well. So here we are, left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, revving the motor, and off we go. Oh, the sound is just next level. That's insane. Okay, I'm going to get manual from the gearbox because. Oh, my goodness. Trust me, the F-Type sounds really brilliant. Oh, 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 oh. Pushes you back into the seat and the gearbox is quite aggressive. This is an 8-speed torque converter gearbox which actually holds on to a gear. It will not make an upshift unless and until you decide to do so. This car is keeping me on my toes. Because the thing is that the ride is very busy, especially on such B roads now. Oh my god, I can feel a lot of stiffness and I can feel the car moving all around the place. So this is powered by a 5 litre supercharged V8 engine which produces 450 horsepower at 6000 rpm and the torque output is 580 Newton meters. <laughs> what a character this engine has. So that 580 Newton meters of torque comes in at a low 2500 rpm actually and stays there till 5000 rpm. Red line comes near 7,000 RPM and the thrust from this engine is unbelievably good. It really pulls but oh my god it gets very bouncy as well. Naturally it has to get bouncy because stiffness I tell you especially in the mode which we are driving right now. Ah, Let me actually turn off the light because you know what this thing does not seem visible with the lights on. Now here on the road, let me tell you that in spite of its weight of 17-80 kgs, it is not that heavy as such when you drive it, it kind of feels on the lighter side, but right now it's raining, there's no issue of traction because this is all-wheel drive of course, around the corners, look at the level of precision, look at the level of, oh my god, handling prowess, it is fantastic, it really takes everything in stride with a lot of grip, thanks to all-wheel drive of course, and then obviously they also have a rear wheel drive model. So basically there are five options in terms of the engine and the, uh, the way the power is delivered. So the base P300 obviously has 300 horsepower and 400 Newton meters of torque. That one is rear wheel drive and you can also get it in all wheel drive. That's fine, obviously it is. Because then there is this one, which is the middle ground, the P450, which is available in rear wheel drive as well as all wheel drive. We are right now driving the all wheel drive version. Rear wheel drive would be so much more fun for sure. Downshift. Oh my god, it sounds so good. I tell you, trust me, the engine sound is just next level. Some things are fogging here on the window area. But you know why uh, it doesn't sound as good as the earlier model? Because of these new emission norms and better insulation and all that. You really cannot hear much on the inside. Around this curvy section, you really enjoy the fluidity of this jack. And then there is the P575, which is in the R trim. This is the R dynamic. Okay, now the difference is that uh, 
That one produces 575 horsepower. Goes from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in around 3.6 seconds. This one takes 4.4 seconds and has a top speed up to 85 kilometers per hour. And uh, the P300 takes around 5.7 seconds. So if you're looking for the fastest Jag, this is not the one. You should get the P575. But why are they offering a lower tune in the V8 model? Well, because they had the V6, the three-liter V6 earlier, which has been discontinued. So this is like the middle ground now. And in terms of performance, it's absolutely breathtaking. In fact, let's open the window. Okay, there's just too much wind noise right now you can't hear a thing downshift downshift oh my god it reaches 7000 rpm in a jiffy it's so fast the engine really revs very fast superchargers sound amazing this engine is really loud at cold start it absolutely goes bonkers and the level of body control is just amazing around the corners you don't feel any lack of grip as such because obviously all wheel drive wide tires and then it has got electronic differential and torque vectoring by braking and you know the drift it has got almost everything you would need to have a very sure footed driving experience 8 speed gearbox is fast with shifts it's a torque converter yes it is a torque converter but it's still fast enough with shifts and then paddle shifters you have you can also make shifts like this using the gear levers that's also nice i love this road for this car it really suits the performance and <laughs> this is such a joy steering is light at low speeds weighs up really well at high speeds the only thing is when you compare it to say the porsche 911 there is where you realize that this is not as dynamic not as nimble and agile but in isolation it's a fantastic effort from jaguar because the f-type is such a brilliant car to drive in fact it was launched in 2013 and i had actually gone with jaguar to spain to drive the car and there i drove the v6 and i drove it on a track and i got a good experience of the f-type but over time you know they've made a lot of changes to the car but essentially the car is the same 50 50 weight distribution or 51 49 weight distribution for the v8 model what an amazing car what an amazing feel it has and obviously it has the drama it has the visuals it has that feel the desirability everything going for it now in india the base variant actually comes at around 1.18 crores for the base p300 and goes above three crores for the top end v8 model with 575 horsepower i think the svr model which is not only more powerful but stiffer has better brakes and all that braking performance is actually good enough here and the whole experience of driving a jaguar f-type around the ghats will tell you that trust me this is a sports car which puts a massive smile on your face because it is just so dynamic so agile so much fun just not as much as a porsche 911 but for the most part you have nothing to complain about because everything is so driver oriented driver centric and that engine amazing but unfortunately this engine is not going to last because already jaguar land rover is dropping this engine this 5 liter supercharged v8 engine which actually comes from ford i believe is being dropped in lieu of a 4.4 liter v8 engine from BMW, yes, already in the range over that it happened. And with the next generation F-Type, which should be launched soon enough, considering this is super duper old now. Trust me on this, the age of this car is nine years. Yeah, nine years. Facelift came recently. They had a lot of uh, changes in terms of, uh, you know, features and all that over time. But it will easily cross 250 kilometers per hour without battling an eyelid and doesn't have any road noise as such, even when you're at higher speed. So everything is very well contained. They have done a fantastic job. And on to the throttle. Driving it in lower gears makes me go absolutely crazy because continuously the engine is on the boil. So low end is good, mid range is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, the mid range punch is super duper awesome and the top end is very frantic. It feels very eager, very alive and as a car, you have to come kind of counter correct, you know, at the limit. But other than that, trust me, when you're not driving around the track, you really enjoy it. I've driven down the track. It has a great balance. It feels very nice, agile, nimble as well. But the only thing is now, it is expensive in India because it comes via the CBU route. Here, though, they have a lot of variants. In India, we have got around eight variants, which is a lot of variants for a car like the F-Type, which doesn't sell in huge numbers considering it comes via the CBU route. Now, here you can see this. So, we are going to actually turn on the G-Force meter because why not? <laughs> you can actually have this short burst of excitement by you know downshifting and then revving the nuts out of this engine to just enjoy the beauty of the f-type it is such a freaking brilliant car amazing i really love the f-type you know for a lot of reasons but i cannot deny that the porsche 911 is better because obviously since 50 years they are doing the same thing fine tuning the same formula so obviously that would be a better car but then in terms of value for money maybe you can get a good deal on the f-type but 
having a four cylinder engine in a sports car doesn't make sense but the p300 is not disappointing at all i thought it would be but it's not okay it is actually decently fun the problem is now today you have to actually go to a race track to really enjoy a car otherwise you can't really extract the best out of it yeah so unless and until you hit the race track there's no way for you to oh 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 you know it pulls and then it continuously goes pulling 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 that is the level of fun this car has to offer i'm going to get into sport for the gearbox and <laughs> gets a bit jerky so if you're opting for the convertible over the coupe version you have to pay 19 lakhs more this is obviously the coupe the f type was initially launched as a convertible only they got the coupe later and the convertible is obviously heavier in terms of weight so that's a bit of a bummer now it has got adaptive dampers adaptive dynamics and what not basically it makes changes to the springs or the stiffness of the springs and the suspension to ensure a good ride when you want comfort in like the normal driving mode and in sport mode it will definitely give you a more dynamic feel amazing balance man you know the exhaust is the highlight of this car because it makes this cracks and pops and all that happens and it sounds so good only thing is it feels a bit jerky this gearbox is slightly jerky it's not very fluid in the way it gives you the shift now in terms of fuel efficiency this actually has a 69 liter fuel tank capacity and it will return somewhere around 4 to 5 kilometers per liter it all depends on your driving style you know what this is a brand new car it had done only 450 miles when jaguar actually gave it to me so i'm actually running in it now that's the reason i'm going little easy with it body roll is very well contained that flex is not there it manages to hold the whole car so tightly it gives you more confidence to like push it harder and faster without battling an eyelid and then you obviously enjoy manually going through the gears because in spite of being a torque converter it still is fast enough with shift 8 speed gearbox in 8 gear you will easily be crossing 270 km per hour such is the level of grunt it has to offer you can see around the corners the balance and everything is quite well sorted out which is hugely impressive and i'm really impressed by the steering wheel as well so with the facelift they have not only made changes to some of the interior in terms of the tech and also gave it an updated front end they also took the trouble of refining the ride and the suspension although the performance remains more or less the same the engines are old but they have that soul supercharged engine but once turbocharged engines come the twin turbo the 4.4 liter they are going to easily cross 600 horsepower hopefully because that's the case with BMW car 625 horsepower from that 4.4 liter V8 engine and 750 newton meters of torque wow that's a fantastic looking Volkswagen van i really like it so now let's do one thing can we drive this car calmly is there a possibility so i'll just get into normal drive mode here gearbox into regular drive and let's see how smooth it becomes yeah now everything is so smooth and refined but you know what that busyness is there you can feel you're driving something quite sporty you think you know like you're sitting so low ground clearance is an issue but not in the uk because even on the worst of speed breakers now this car easily glides through in india you have a tough time taking it over bad roads because when you do now it has that tendency to scrape so i remember i drove a red one which was the 5 liter v8 with 500 horsepower then i drove a white one which was again the 5 liter v8 with 500 horsepower and then i drove a red color 2 liter p300 with 300 horsepower but i enjoyed all of them equally because the f type is not just about performance it's also about the visual drama it's also about the oral drama because this is a car which sounds fantastic and there's a nice corner here so if you want to take things easy this car lets you do that as well it not necessarily means that you have to whack over the throttle and go really very fast because on certain roads like this you know i can feel that the road has this little busy surface and it's not the smoothest and that's where the car kind of even in normal driving mode suffers because the ride seems busy continuously you can feel that something is happening some uneasiness is happening we are on such a beautiful road with no traffic at all it's kind of unbelievable like this is the dream right an empty road with nice curves a good road beautiful weather nice greenery around you and a jaguar f type with you with a full tank of gas okay it has full tank of gas yeah it does i filled it yesterday only don't ask it was bankruptcy right there at the moment because it is a guzzler and the fuel costs are absolutely insane right now and 
me driving this in regular normal drive mode is kind of a disservice to a sports car like the F-Type which means we have to actually shift it into you know what in spite of whatever mode I'm in it's still so freaking fun the dynamics of this car are unbelievably good I love it so let me get into the dynamic mode and here we are into dynamic mode things become red to tell you that you know what you're in dynamic mode you can rev the nuts out of the motor what a fantastic car what a joy to drive especially on these roads brings a massive smile on your face as well the only thing is i don't even know oh my god i'm in six gear i was not aware which gear we are driving in but driving in six gear at the moment or rather seventh right now the engine feels a little bit relaxed but the suspension just does not in fact to put it into perspective the real way to drive this car is downshift like this it got me in third actually i was hoping to get into second but here we downshift into second every time you know you downshift it has this pop it has this aggressive uh, you know the ref counter actually blips and then it pulls with such a <laughs> oh my god it's a fantastic gearbox it's surprising that the gearbox manages things so well here so let me do one thing let me actually turn on the air conditioning and why am i turning it on so this thing comes out so you guys can also see how the dashboard looks with the air conditioning on this is cool but I know for a fact this will not last long because it at times such things have failed on an F-Type itself I have seen that I had to physically remove it, but they have made some design changes here so it's not like I can put my hand and pull it out that doesn't work anymore earlier it used to but now not a chance It's a continuous push, 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 and there you are gone. That is unbelievable fun. Okay, so we get into sport mode, left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, revving the motor, and off we go. Oh my God, the acceleration is brisk, but this road is massively bumpy. It's absolutely crazy. So guys, if you like this vlog, make sure to give the thumbs up, that's the like button, and also subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next video real soon. Bye-bye.